secured overnight financing rate unchanged on January, January 19th. Welcome traders to this week's live trade analysis session with me, Patrick Mullally. We're just going to uh, give another 30 seconds here before we get going. Uh, before we do start today, it would be useful for me if you can just confirm that you can see the welcome screen and you can hear me loud and clear if you could type a Y in the chat box. That's, uh, that's helpful, so I know we are good to go. Thank you. Okay, so before we jump into the presentation, as always, we want to adhere to the risk disclaimer. Most importantly and pertinent to today's conversation is that the ideas expressed by me today are solely mine. They are not indicative of or representative of those held by Tickmill UK or Tickmill Europe Limited. And for those of you who are here for the first time, a brief introduction to myself. Um, after I graduated from university, I joined a city PLC consulting firm. I left with some colleagues and went on to successfully co-found and exit a consulting startup, which was focused on C-suite executive search for technology startups. Having a front row seat to the dot-com bubble, witnessing people make and lose a fortune in the markets, quite literally sometimes overnight, I decided to explore my curiosity for markets. With some capital to play with and some time on my hands, I started day trading the S&P 500, or probably more appropriately, day gambling. After some early beginner's luck, I racked up some pretty solid gains. However, as is often the case, my beginner's luck ran out, and as the market phase changed, I began to average down, giving back all my gains and ultimately experiencing a significant six-figure financial hit. Uh, to say this was a gut-wrenching and sobering experience is an understatement. I really had to stand back and figure out if it was feasible for me to make a living from the market. So I decided to get serious about trading and sought out a mentor with an excellent trading track record. Working with my mentor for a period of 18 months to two years, it was a time during which I have not just my technical game in terms of researching, developing extensively back and forward testing strategies that most crucially suited my personality, and all of which were underpinned by a rigorous risk management approach. But most importantly, during this period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental game. And probably the most important watershed shift I made was from being a highly goal-oriented individual focused on financial gains to becoming purely process-oriented. So what does that actually mean? Well, it means I had to stop focusing on what I make from the markets and start focusing solely on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy, oftentimes in the face of negative feedback from the markets in the form of losing trades. But once you become process orientated and have a professional trading mindset, and you understand the true nature of trading, really being a numbers game in which you're simply playing the probabilities, you lose the emotional investment and that hellish emotional roller coaster of living and dying by the outcomes of individual trades. So I'm no longer concerned with the outcomes of individual trades or a small string of trades. My focus is on the next 100 trades, because I know if I focus on excellence and execution, that my edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. My multi-strategy approach has delivered profitable annual returns since 2008. Since 2013, I've also been managing investor capital through a managed account service, delivering again annual positive returns. And I'm currently responsible for managing a multi-million dollar portfolio. Since 2010, I've mentored hundreds of private traders of all experience levels, from complete novices to former CME floor traders, in developing the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. In addition to my fund management and mentoring, I'm a resident market expert exclusively providing market and trade analysis to Tickmill. I provide an in-depth daily market outlook, breaking down the fundamental and technical drivers for the day ahead. I also provide daily technical trade setup videos for about three to five markets that I'm actively tracking and those are shared through the Tickmill Trading View account under the Trade Ideas tab. I also run Tickmill's rapidly growing e-mini strategy group, where I post a daily uh, trade video outlining my pre-market trading plan for the cash New York cash trading session. I give my bias for the day in specific action areas where I'm looking to engage the market. These pre-market plans have delivered over 1,850 points of profit since we launched this service in April of last year. 
The second Ticknell strategy group I run is for traders who really want to take their trading to the next level. The Ticknell Futures Trading Telegram group is a real-time environment. On a daily basis, I share in-depth insights and trades. I also live stream during the opening hour of the cash session, where I look over my shoulder and watch in real time as I dissect the markets and identify asymmetric trading opportunities. These live trade sessions will act as a platform helping you to develop as a professional, consistent trader, uh, looking to approach the markets and navigate them and uh, using a consistent plan. And most importantly, I help you with the mental mind games that must be mastered to make it as a profitable market operator. So that gives you a flavor of where it is I'm coming from. Now I want to jump over to the charts. Today we're going to be looking at the four hour time frame. Got a bunch of opportunities that I see uh, developing in, uh, in this current session, potentially, and certainly uh, tomorrow and as we head into Monday. Um, before I start uh, analyzing the charts, I just want to um, let you know that if you have any questions, um, if you make a note of them in the chat or in the Q&A, and I will, co I will come back to those at the end of the presentation. I'll just go through uh, the charts first of all, uninterrupted, and then we'll, uh, we'll review any questions that you might have at, uh, at the end of the session. So we're going to start here with the S&P 500. Um, I'm using the E-mini futures contract. And we have been in a correction since posting a, uh, a high there, a new all-time high, at, uh, at the beginning of the year. And that correction has essentially uh, traded in a three-way pattern versus the swing high at the uh, 47, it's 39.50 that should read. Uh, let's make a small adjustment there. And so that, once we posted that uh, corrective high, the reaction high versus the first reaction low, that gave us a downside objective of the 4509 level, which is the equality objective. And I think we're going to trade into that zone and potentially a little bit lower to just take out the stops here uh, below the 4500 level that uh, are undoubtedly being eyed by the bears. So whilst we uh, continue to hold the 4566 level as resistance, um, I'm looking for an extension down to the test the monthly range support at uh, 40. 500 and then potentially just a quick clip below there daily projected range supports at 4480s and projected ascending uh, descending sorry trend line support there as well so if buyer step back in there i'll be looking to engage on the long side and then we will play for a three-way corrected move up into descending trend line resistance trend channel resistance that comes in at 4630 important uh, for those who are active in this market uh, it's options expiration tomorrow and um, the key levels to pay attention to, uh, to my mind, are the 4600, which is the big pin strike for the expiration tomorrow. And the other level I'd be paying very close attention to is any break of the uh, 4450 level would be a significant bearish development, certainly as we head into tomorrow, and could lead to quite a downdraft in uh, in the in the. Uh, e mini s &P. So um, as we hold the 4500s or just below, I'm looking to uh, for buyers to step in. And then as we head into next week to get a bounce and short squeeze um, post options expiration, as we uh, often see. And I've been looking for that to play out to get uh, a test up into this descending trend line resistance at the 4630 level. And the NASDAQ, so again, we're using futures contract. The, NASDAQ E-mini futures contract. We have a downside objective versus the swing high here at the 16,630 area. We are looking for prices to extend through the current lows and get a test to the equality objective at 14,510. So whilst we hold resistance, trend line resistance at the 15,220 area, watch for bearish reversal patterns, set short positions, targeting this move down to the 14,500 level. From there then, uh, again, post options expiration, we can think about a corrective move to, uh, to see us test back up into the current descending trend line resistance at 15,000, 
150 level, and potentially extend a bit higher here into the high volume nodes up towards 15,600. So it's going to be key to see how price responds at this 14,500 and certainly those lows there at 14,374. Watch for bullish reversal patterns there to engage on the long side. And we will look initially for a test of the descending trend line resistance as the first upside objective. Dow Jones, the YM is the uh, futures contract that I'm tracking here. We have put in a test of the descending trend line resistance here. We have um, already exceeded the equality objective at 35,000. Um, so any pullbacks now that fail into um, this prior uh, resistance area here and support at uh, 35,500, anticipate we get another leg down to get a move that will test into the 34,698 area. And then from there again, similar to these other indexes, they have a tendency to, uh, to move in a similar, uh, similar fashion. We are looking then for bullish reversal patterns to extend to the upside, ideally post options expiration, to get a test of the um, um, descending trend line support that will be coming in somewhere around uh, 35,440s. Russell. This one is uh, has also got a, a quality objective that remains untested. So we have this high, the all-time highs there, uh, 2460s, and we have versus the swing low and the initial reaction high, 2289. We're looking for a test of 1932. So as we continue to trade within this internal sending trend channel, we're watching for bearish reversal patterns against this trend channel as an opportunity to engage on the short side. So uh, 2100s, anywhere in there, and a bearish rejection sets us up then to play for the 1930. And from there, then we would anticipate a more significant three-way corrective move. And the initial target will be into that descending trend line resistance that comes in around 2170s. DAX. <coughs> Similar, uh, similar story here, we have a untested uh, equality objective, 15,523. So whilst we hold resistance at the trend line, watch for a bear, bearish reversal patterns to develop, to engage on the short side, targeting that 15,523. From there, we look then for a break of the descending trend channel resistance and a move up into the major trend line resistance at 16,240 for the DAX. Let's move into the interest rates. So uh, we're going to start here with the 10-year uh, T-note futures. Uh, still looking for lower prices at the moment. And uh, whilst we hold, whilst we test and find rejection, bearish reversal patterns, 127.30s, we are looking for an extension down to projected trend channel support, 126.19s. And then from there, a, a more extended uh, corrective move to get us back into trend channel resistance at the 128.07. And obviously then that 10 year feeds into the uh, rates, 10 year rates. We have a nice uh, five wave sequence developing here. So what I'm looking for now is uh, as, as, we, as we break lower here, we look for a failure and a retest of support back to the 170 level. Obviously the, uh, the interest rates trade in the inverse to the, um, the futures contract. And from there, then we anticipate uh, buyers to try and step back in and to defend that level and then move back up to test 180 as resistance will be the next, uh, next move we'll be tracking there. So let's jump to the dollar index. Now the dollar has, uh, has, been, has been testing this uh, pivotal trend line support here on the four hour time frame. Buyers have stepped back in, but we are now up looking at the trend line resistance. For those who uh, joined the presentation last night, you'll know that ideally what I'm looking for in the dollar is, uh, is another cycle high to, um, to develop here into the highly anticipated uh, Federal Reserve um, move coming into March. So the dollar is trying to break resistance here. If we can get through this, um, 
this zone, oh, sorry, this level at the uh, 95 60s, we look for a move back up into 9648. And then we will try and see if the dollar can, uh, can grind it out to the upside and ultimately looking for a test of the 98 handle into that Federal Reserve meeting. Now, the alternative scenario is that um, we don't find sufficient support and we start to break down. If we take out the trend line support uh, on a closing basis again, then that is significantly going to weaken that support. And then I'd be starting to think about downside objectives and certainly a move back down to test the 94 uh, 9430s, any pullbacks then that, that recheck that trend line support to act as resistance, we can then think about moves down to the yearly pivot at 9390 as the next step to the downside. Gold. <clears throat> Trading inversely, obviously, uh, well, not at the moment, it's uh, it will be seeing a little bit of strength in terms of the dollar, obviously, but certainly we'll see more strength in terms of gold. We are trading, I'll just jump to the daily time frame so that you're aware of this. We're in a big triangle pattern in gold. And again, as I referenced in the live session last night, I am uh, I'm increasingly turning, uh, turning bullish gold and looking for, for prices to extend to the upside. So what I look for now is a test of this trend line, projected trend line resistance, uh, monthly and daily range resistance, 1850s. As pullbacks then remain supported into uh, 1820s, 1830s, I'm going to be looking for bullish reversal patterns to get in on the long side, looking for an extension up into the resistance zone at 1879. So that's what I'm tracking in gold, silver, similarly bullish at this juncture. So we've got a nice uh, channel that we're trading in, pitchfork channel. So as we find support now at the 24 handle, $24. I'm looking for another extension to the upside. And ultimately, I'm looking for a move to test the uh, trend line, uh, sorry, the prior resistance zone here at 2530s as the next upside objective. So as pullbacks remain supported into this 24 area, I'm looking for bullish reversal patterns to engage on the long side, looking for a test of 2530s. Another bullish uh, metal here, industrial metal this time, we have copper. And what we're looking for are pullbacks into the trend line support to uh, as buying opportunities at this stage. So we look for a move into the 441.75s to watch there for bullish reversal patterns on the four hour time frame to engage, look for a break of this uh, descending trend line resistance and then get us up into the major uh, descending trend line resistance and the projected channel resistance up towards 477. 10 as the next upside objective for copper. Crude oil, still tracking to the upside. I'm looking for any pullbacks now into the prior highs and this projected ascending trend line, uh, 8420s. We look for bullish reversal patterns there to set long positions and also be looking for us to grind it out then to the uh, confident target zone, uh, the 3.618 extension of the major uh, one two wave there. Uh, a natural wave three target. We also have the 127 extension of the last leg to the downside, coalescing around this 9160, 92 area. So bullish reversal patterns at 8440, uh, 8460 to get long, targeting move up through 90, and then on to get a test towards the 92 handle. At this stage, it would really take a loss of this trend line support to suggest we have a more meaningful high in place. But even at that juncture, what I'd be looking for would be an equality objective versus our wave two here. So if we do take out the trend line support, the next target area is going to be uh, the 79 handle. But even from there, I'm still looking, uh, this is still a bullish structure. And we will be looking then for a, uh, a wave one quality objective to develop. Let's just draw, give you a sense of what I've been looking at. So even from that 70, uh, even back into a 79 test, we still look then for an extension up into at 92 target zone. So we've got a couple of interesting uh, areas where we can look to engage here on the long side for crude, looking for that 9180, and, sorry, 9160 to 92 level as the next upside objective for crude, uh, looking pretty bullish at the moment. Bitcoin. Now on the daily time frame, 
And uh, we'll just jump to that so you can see where we are sitting with our uh, Bitcoin position. Bitcoin is testing the major ascending trend line support. Third test here, any loss of that on a closing basis is going to be a bearish development. And to be honest with you, looking at the, uh, the channel at the moment that we're trading in, it's, uh, we haven't really got bullish signals as such to, uh, to cling on to here. At best, what we can look for at the moment will be a three wave move into uh, the 4594 level, which could set up then another extension to the downside. And um, we have an equality objective versus the swing high here at 52, uh, 52,265, which would actually take us down sub 30 into 28,380 uh, before we would complete this, uh, this sequence that we're currently in. When I'm talking about the equality objective, just for those who are here for the first time, what we're talking about is this swing structure here, and that gives us the target before the correction uh, would have a, uh, a technically complete pattern. So um, at this juncture, to for me to get bullish, we really need to break this trend line resistance. Projected trend line resistance comes in just around 48,000. If we get uh, a daily close, a couple of daily closes through there, then uh, that would, uh, would be a, a, a bullish development. And then we can start to think about outside objectives. But for now, whilst we hold 45,900, it's, uh, it's further downside is, uh, is my bet at this stage. Dollar yen trading in a, a corrective pattern at the moment. So we have, uh, I'll just jump out to the daily here. You can see the trend line support that we're looking at there. So this is the daily trend line from those lows printed uh, at 102.60s. So what we're looking for here is third test. So going back to the four hour now, you can see we have a pretty nice pattern to play for here. So as this trend line resistance continues to hold uh, 114.70s, look for bearish reversal patterns to engage on the short side also we're looking for a test of the equality objective versus this swing structure here uh 1230s and then that major ascending trend line support also coming in there so bullish reversal patterns there will be an opportunity to re-engage on the long side and we still have upside objectives above the 117 handle on the daily time frame um, at this stage to uh, to suggest this current correction is done and dusted, we really want to uh, get a break through the descending trend line resistance and take out 115. And then it would be a question of looking at pullbacks to get long, looking for that one, looking for a test above that 117 handle. Dollar CAD also from a daily perspective, sitting right on its trend line support. Um, so if the dollar um, index is going to break high, we really want to see this dollar CAD make a move through this trend line resistance here, uh, 125.50s to engage then on the long side, ultimately then looking for a daily move. Um, jump out to the daily and just show you what I'm looking at there. So if we can get a close back through the pivot here, at 125.50, 125.60, opens up a 132 equality objective versus this swing structure here and the swing low at 122.90s. We're trying to defend it, but still yet to get that really bullish close to uh, to encourage us to uh, deploy long positions. Obviously, any break back through this double bottom here, one twenty four fifties, will be a bearish development, and then I'll be looking to play for uh, for a downside breakout through the channel. Um, Euro dollar. Looking for a potential third test of the ascending trend line support here. If we don't find buyers at that level and we break through, um, then I'm looking for the, uh, the descending trend, uh, sorry, the descending wedge pattern. Again, we'll just quickly jump out to the daily here and I'll uh, highlight that for you. It's a bit clearer. So we've had a false break here. If we break the trend line support, I'm looking for a test down close to 110, and that coincides with a big monthly trend line. Again, talked about this last night, and uh, that could be a really meaningful spot for the euro dollar to, uh, to put in a stand and potentially mark a, a significant low. Any break of the 110 would be uh, a significant bearish development to my mind. We take out that monthly trend line, and then we'd be in, uh, we'd be in a new paradigm really for the euro. Uh, we're opening up significant downside targets. But for now, 
Uh, we'll see how we trade at the trend line. If we hold it, bullish reversals, then I'll, uh, I'll look to re-engage on the long side. But my sense is at this stage that uh, we take it out and uh, the dollar looks to grind higher and the euro down to that long 10, and then we'll see what we can do on the long side. But first port of call is going to be that trend line and we'll see how prices respond from there. Euro sterling, this one is on the radar now. We have this big daily descending wage pattern, which has a target now down at 82.90. So what I'm looking for here is this, uh, we've got a nice five wave sequence to track here. And this we are going to call our wave four and wave three. So we're looking for a fifth wave extension into this 82.90. And then from there, we want to see bullish reversal patterns accompanied, uh, sorry, uh, accompanied and maintaining the um, bullish divergence that we have here on our uh, momentum indicator, cycle indicator. So as long as we maintain the di divergence, we get the bullish reversal pattern, then I'm going to be engaging on the long side. And we want to see initially a break of this trend line resistance here to encourage further upside and certainly when you think about high volume node there up towards 85.50 as the initial upside objective in what should be a, a more significant corrective pattern. Sterling, this one uh, still in a bullish sequence for now and I'm looking for any tests into 135.50, the projected channel support here, which for bullish reversal patterns on the long side then, and we're looking for a test up into the 138.20s as the next upside objective for Sterling. So keen to see how price responds at the 135.50s, bullish reversal patterns there, and we will be looking for upside objectives to complete a, uh, a nice five wave sequence from the, uh, the lows there. From there, we anticipate a uh, pullback, with, um, a more extended pullback and a more significant three wave sequence. And then we look again on the long side in terms of Sterling at this stage, uh, close below that 135 will be a, uh, a warning to the bulls and uh, we could be looking down then towards the retest of these prior cycle lows, 13170s. And on the daily time frame, uh, I'll just show you what we've got to the downside. <clears throat> if, uh, if we do roll over here, we still have that uh, X, uh, that Y objective down at 130 versus those 138.30 highs. So uh, Keep that in mind if we uh, if we don't find support at that 135.50 channel. Uh, what else have I got on watch here? Sterling yen. Similar scenario really to the, uh, uh, or similar structure, so to speak, to the uh, sterling dollar. I'm looking for a fourth wave load to complete here in a wedge scenario. So if we, uh, if we get another swing down into projected daily, uh, range support and the descending trend channel watch for bullish reversal patterns there to engage on the long side and we're looking for breakouts and certainly think about a retest of these prior cycle highs 158.16 uh, with the potential for a move towards 159 is, uh, is what i'm looking for in terms of sterling yen sterling kiwi looking for one more uh, one more Attempt higher here. We have an equality objective that remains just shy of being tested. So, this is this swing structure here. We are looking for one, uh, sorry, two, 201.91 to get tested. So, as pullbacks find support at the pivot, we look for a move into that area. And again, important for us in terms of the bearish to play this counter trend, we must maintain the. Uh, divergence. But if we do there, we watch some bearish reversal patterns to engage on the short side, certainly think about a move back to uh, the 198.70s, which is a symmetry swing target versus that last meaningful correction that we've had in this leg to the upside. So that's what, uh, what I'm tracking in terms of the uh, sterling kiwi. Now, if we take the trend line out um, from the current levels, then this gives us this target here um, back into the equality objective. One ninety-eight thirties. Again, we still have opportunities there on the long side. Admittedly, it's uh, it becomes uh, a little bit more challenging. But as long as this move up for this leg occurs in a three-wave sequence, you can see as we did the last time here, you got that three-wave move, and that's what we're always looking for to confirm a correction. 
So uh, as long as this, if we do break the trend line, it's a three-way cycle, and we can still look to engage on the long side, uh, looking for another leg to the upside. Aussie. If we hold this trend line support, then we are ultimately looking for the Aussie to, uh, to move higher here. And uh, the, the target we have, I'll just draw this in a few. So versus the swing structure here, we actually have an equality objective that comes in just above the trend line at the 74 handle. So <clears throat> what I anticipate we get here now is uh, we're a little bit overdone in terms of momentum at the moment on the upside. So pull back back into this uh, 72 handle. As long as we get the bullish reversals there, then I've been looking on the long side and looking for a push up into this 74 test. Now, if that Aussie pattern plays out, you want to bear in mind that that would suggest that the uh, dollar CAD fails at its trend line. So that's an important correlation to, uh, to keep in mind. Another one I'm looking at here is the Aussie CAD. This, uh, this could give us a setup today. Last trade we had in this was this inverse head and shoulders that worked out really nicely. Um, and what we've got here with the Aussie CAD is a potential meaningful double bottom now. So the trade for me here is that we take out the trend line resistance. We then get that first pullback. I know the Aussie CAD loves these inverse head and shoulders patterns. So looking for a pullback then into the 1940s to engage on the long side, minimum upside objective into that 9170s. And potentially we have a more meaningful low in place in terms of the double bottom. And then we can look at range resistance up towards the 93. The key obviously is going to be the break of that, uh, of that trend line before, uh, before we get excited about that one. And that pretty much, can, let's just take a quick look at the Kiwi. The Kiwi looking to hold its, uh, its trend line support here, although numerous tests suggest it could be weakening. And, um, and so I'm going uh, to keep an eye on closes below this trend line support as, uh, as potential opportunities really to, uh, for the Kiwi to, to roll over here. And uh, moves back in then to test the trend line support as resistance with bearish reversal patterns. I think there are going to be opportunities to uh, to look on the short side in terms of the Kiwi, uh, which just at this stage does look weaker uh, than uh, than its Aussie counterpart. So those are the trades I'm tracking at the moment and the opportunities I see in the sessions ahead. A bunch of really nice uh, high probability plays there to keep an eye on. Uh, for those of you who uh, want to keep abreast of the trade alerts that, uh, that I share, I will put into the chat the Tickmill uh, Trading View Trade Ideas link. And for those who are interested in joining the, uh, the eMini Futures um, strategy group, the, the first one that I referenced, the Facebook group, it's uh, there's, all you have to do is request membership. There's no additional obligations there. And, you can receive my daily trade plan posted before the market opens in the US with, uh, with all the specific trade levels. I also provide, I also share in some institutional research there so you can see how the, uh, the big boys, the banks, uh, investment banks are positioning themselves uh, for, uh, for the markets as well, which is useful. And then if you're interested in, in taking it to the next level, I guess, and thinking about um, joining the Tickmill trading, uh, Tickmill trading telegram channel uh, that I talked about at the opening. Uh, I'll post my LinkedIn um, via there. You can DM me through LinkedIn or alternatively, you can catch me on my email, patrick.munley at tipmillpartners.com. So that's, uh, that's me done for now. Are there any questions? You can type them into the chat box or into the Q&A. Um, any pairs you might want to take a look at that I haven't covered in, uh, in my opportunity set. Um, equally, if you don't have a question, if you type an N in the chat box, that's helpful so I know that we're all on the same page and I've done a, a reasonable job of explaining what it is I'm looking at and what I'm uh, looking to trade in the coming sessions. Okay, so don't see any questions coming through at the moment. So I'm going to take that as uh, we're all good to go. And uh, we'll leave this, uh, this session now. Uh, and we'll reconvene at the same time next week, or I hope to see some of you in the Ticknell uh, Futures Strategy Group and, uh, and following along with the trade ideas 
uh, through the Tickmill Trading Plan. As always, traders, plan the trades, trade the plan, most importantly, manage your risk. Until next time, thanks very much.